Hey guys, this is Anime Ball Z here, and today we are going to be doing the opening part of What If Goku Was Half Kryptonian. Please like the video if you haven't already, and subscribe, it's totally free, and you can unsubscribe whenever you want. There's nothing much else I'd like to say in the intro, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Slick talker since it did. Winter time, all the time, ooh. Yeah. Look at the way that I move, swear. Disrespectful and I'm rude, okay? I had cocaine in the school. First, I'll give some backstory on how I'll place the Kryptonians within the Dragon Ball universe. Within Universe 7, in a galaxy out of the area of jurisdiction of the Frieza Empire, lays a planet housing the special Kryptonian race. Unluckily, the species have settled on a planet larger and more massive than Earth that orbits a red star. This means for now, the power levels of these Kryptonians range from like 7 to 10, not far above normal human levels. However, under the power of a yellow star, these same Kryptonians possess power levels that are in the tens of thousands. A highly trained Kryptonian with long-term exposure to yellow starlight can even push past the 100,000 power level boundary. As part of one of his special missions to a faraway section of the Freezer Empire, Barnock ends up venturing past the given boundaries of the Empire and stumbles upon the planet Krypton. He is taken aback by the planet's level of technology and ends up staying for a little while. Due to the type of mission, he is supposed to spend a lot of time off planet and ends up having a child with a Kryptonian woman there. She is of a very important family on the planet that also bears some of the most athletic Kryptonians on the planet. He names the son Kakarot and during this time starts getting visions of the destruction of planet Vegeta. The Kryptonians despise this child that the two have had and decide to banish the child and the two parents away from the planet for good. Bardock must return to planet Vegeta from given orders by Frieza and Bardock must leave her alone to return to his old family basically. He ends up returning and decides to send Kakarot back in a covert manner without Gine realising. Kakarot is sent to Earth as he is in canon and all of the Saiyans are killed by Frieza himself. Goku is still picked up by Grandpa Gohan and is given a birth power level of not 2 but instead 300. Of course, this is when he's under the power of a yellow star. What Bardock observed was a power level of 10 back on planet Krypton due to the sun that the planet orbited. However, now his power level has skyrocketed due to his exposure to light from a golden star. Bardock also did notice his varying power level as he travelled with him back to planet Vegeta but he didn't think much of it. The reason for why Goku's power level was varying as he was returning to planet Vegeta was because Bardock was passing several different stars. These stars were of different colours and were giving him different amounts of power. So what changes here is that Goku's temper is a lot calmer than it is in canon. This is before he even hits his head. He's going to have a mix of personality between his Saiyan heritage and Kryptonian heritage so he isn't as much of a bother to contain as he was in canon. Also this means that he never hits his head so he doesn't undergo any drastic change in his personality. With his mixed DNA, his Saiyan power is heightened, just like the hybrid Saiyans of canon and as he trains under Grandpa Gohan, he grows much stronger. His power level raises to a high 1500 before he meets Bulma and ends up receiving special training from Master Roshi himself. What is different in his transformation that kills Grandpa Gohan is that he gains control of himself eventually. With a power level of almost 15,000, he ends up killing Grandpa Gohan and destroying the terrain with his very destructive heat vision. Also, he doesn't need to be taught how to fly because eventually he learns how to do it himself. It's a great asset and he also learns how to utilise his heat vision and that makes him a much more deadly warrior. As of now, he's the strongest fighter on the planet by a strong margin. The early sagas of Dragon Ball mainly consist of Goku basically getting what he wants. The obstructions to his plans can do nothing to hamper his progress since he's just so strong. His power level grows all the way to 11,000 by the time of the Tian Shinhan saga and his strength shows no sign of stopping. By the time of the King Piccolo saga, Krillin is killed by Tambourine but then once Goku gets there, he kills Tambourine with a simple heat vision blast that destroys his body. King Piccolo is also killed before he gets to wish for his youth and so are his minions. However, I'll say that Piccolo is still born from the older version of King Piccolo and Goku keeps him alive. This is because he assumes that he'll be strong enough to defeat him if he was to act out in any way. Kami realises how strong Goku is and wants to utilise the potential that he has. He can already fly and is now merely increasing his level of strength. There aren't really any more skills that he has to learn from the masters that he has. This time, as he enters the hyperbolic time chamber, he can actually stay in there for a long period of time. He manages to stay 
staying there for the entire year instead of the month that he spent in Canon. His power level skyrockets to 20,000. The reason for his sharp increase in power is from two things. One, his sane hybridity means that he has more potential and two, his Kryptonian side means that he is growing stronger and stronger under the golden sun. After so much training, they also realise that his body is much more durable, even for his power level. This durability comes from his Kryptonian side, that fortifies his body under the vitalising rays of the Yellow Sun. Piccolo Jr comes around and Goku is able to literally stomp him. A single strike almost kills him and Piccolo pleads for his life to remain alive. After this period, there is five years where Goku still marries Chi Chi and they have their child Gohan. Gohan is half human, quarter Saiyan and quarter Kryptonian. His birth power level is 350, even higher than his father's and his power begins to grow steadily also. By the time the five years of peace are over, his power level has already reached around 500. Ranitz is then tasked with heading back to Earth to check on his brother and to see if he has completed his mission. Ranitz drops down into the atmosphere in his spacecraft and easily destroys the frail farmer that stumbles upon him. Of course, Raditz isn't actually half Kryptonian in this story, so Raditz still has a power level of 1,500. This means that Raditz's arrival goes pretty much exactly the same up until this point. Raditz meets Piccolo along his way, and still, he can do nothing to even leave a graze on Raditz. I'd say that Piccolo is slightly stronger at this point to try and surpass Goku, but of course, this is something that he simply can't do. He still works hard to try and achieve that goal that he has, and so his power level is going to be around 400 and something. I'd say he's around as strong as Goku was in the canon at this point. Raditz then feels a strong power level of 502 and another power level of 331 in the distance. Intrigued by this, he heads right over to see what's happening. The waves of water below him rise explosively until he arrives in front of Kami House. Goku is already outside as he has sensed his power, but he knows he is way stronger than Raditz. Don't come any closer, Goku shouts out, before Raditz lands on the shore of the small island. Brother, if it isn't you, our father's bastard child, Raditz says, before stepping forward. Goku remains in stance and steps ahead of his son and friends to then face his brother. How could your son have a higher power level than yourself? What am I expecting? How could a weakling diluted saying like you possess any slither of strength? After Raditz says this, he lunges forward toward Goku's son. He dashes forward, but Goku begins lifting his suppression and shatters his armor with a quick strike to his chest. The material crumbles and Raditz is stopped in place, totally shocked. The power his brother possesses seems impossible for the power level he had, but then he sees that his power level is now at 3,400. How? Your power level jumped suddenly, Raditz shouts, holding his chest. Goku, now angry, lifts his suppression fully and makes Raditz's scouter shatter because of his rapidly growing power level. Over 10,000, how could this be, Raditz says, stumbling away from his brother in fear. Leave this planet and never come back or I'll kill you, Goku shouts in a protective but aggressive manner. Raditz thinks about going back to his higher-ups with his mission undone and what they'll do to him. Raditz makes the rash decision of flying forward again, but then Goku's eyes glow red and he blasts him right away. His body is blasted to smithereens and the intense heat from his heat vision scorches his remains and makes his body pretty much unrecognisable. This brings the Raditz saga to quite the abrupt stop and some events obviously change. Goku does not go to King Kai and the only option would be for Kami to recommend Goku to go to him for training. I believe that this is something that Kami would actually end up doing because Goku is in search of more power to use and he believes his techniques could be of use. Of course he knows that Goku also has great potential so giving him more techniques and more training will make him an even greater protector of Earth. This time, he crosses Snake Way in just a few hours. He is much stronger and his Kryptonian DNA makes him more adept at flight. Upon arriving at the area, King Kai is hyped up to see what Goku is capable of. As their training begins, he sees that he is quite a natural with the techniques that he is learning. He intends to spend only a few months there and he wants to return to his family rather soon. His main intention of heading over to King Kai is to try and get new techniques, but not to really hone in on his power. Of course, that is just something that he could do on Earth. After the first few months, his power level raises to 44,000 from the 28,000 that it was as Raditz arrived. He is now capable of Kaioken times 8 and this gives him a maximum power level of 352,000. 
only if Goku knew he could be getting much much stronger if he just rested in the core of a star to gain strength. Also, Goku doesn't actually know if he can survive in space yet, but since all the humans around him can't, he assumes that he can't also, but this is quite obviously false. During his training, however, Vegeta and Nappa are on course to arriving on the planet to take down the being known as Kakarot. Goku is still training with King Kai, and even with his new power, it would still take hours for him to head back to Earth. During this time, after the humiliation from Goku and his brother, Piccolo is more than furious and wants to train even harder than he did before. This means his power level will instead rise to 4,000 over these 11 months. Even without the warning from Raditz of the incoming threat, he still feels that it's essential to work as hard as he can. Gohan over this time naturally rises to a power level of 1,500. However, he doesn't train but he can fly and use his heat vision. Raditz never had the time to tell the Earthlings that Vegeta and Nappa would be heading to Earth after him. This means that Gohan and the Earthlings aren't even training. The humans haven't really been training but as Piccolo trains in solitude he feels the key signature of two strong warriors hurdling toward Earth. Is that Goku? No, it's two people, one much stronger than the other, Piccolo thinks, while training. The other fighters on the planet soon sense their incoming strength. They land where they do in cannon and destroy the surrounding city. Piccolo soon faces Nappa and Vegeta is more interested in facing Goku than anyone else he sees right now. Piccolo and Nappa stand off against each other and they look to be of similar stature. However, Nappa clearly has considerably more muscle mass. Nappa charges in with a punch but Piccolo manages to parry his strike and in his next step retreats away several meters. Now with more than 20 meters between them, Piccolo takes his chance to begin charging his special beam cannon. Nappa has no clue what that attack is and continues watching him as the majestic streaks of vibrantly coloured energy crackle out from his two extended fingers. Special beam cannon, Piccolo roars, shooting out his beam toward Nappa. The beam is so fast that the other Z fighters can barely react to his shot and the only people capable of clearly perceiving his movement are the two Saiyans. Vegeta believes that the beam is child's play but Nappa is forced to leap out the way as fast as he possibly can. However, as he tries to move out the way, he is caught on his right arm, it pierces through his forearm and it causes him great pain. He shouts and bellows upon taking this hit and this renders his right arm useless. Unimekian pest, you will pay for what you've done here, Nappa shouts while extending his other arm. As he does so, a key blast is released that completely destroys the surrounding area and leaves a massive dent in the flooring around Piccolo. This attack leaves a large and agonising bruise across Piccolo's arm but he has the resolution to fight through it. After these months of training extremely hard, his mind has been sharpened even more than it was in canon and he knows not to fully give in to his emotions. The two continue their battle and they seem equally matched. Piccolo can land attacks of his own and Nappa can do the same. However, Nappa seems to have a lot more experience when it comes to battling. I mean, Nappa has definitely wiped out planets and he simply has been alive for way longer than Piccolo has. Piccolo's only 5 years older than Gohan after all. The two warriors charge at each other and then punch each other in the face. Both of their punches land at the same time and cause them to slide back and away. Both fighters are in a pant and Piccolo seems to be more injured than Nappa is. A main difference between them two is that Nappa seems to be loving the fight a lot more than Piccolo. Nappa then begins charging his ki and his armour shatters in his power up. He begins using all the power that he can muster then gapes open his mouth while facing Piccolo. The Namekian doesn't know what's to come then a mouth beam suddenly shoots toward him. He has no time to react to its amazing speed and he is caught in the head of the blast right away. His clothes are scorched and he is left in critical condition, causing him to fall from the skies. He coughs blood shortly after contacting the ground and seconds later the Namekian perishes. Too bad you Namekians don't grow and adapt in the heat of battle. No matter how hard you train, the Saiyan race triumphs, Snapper shouts, while clenching his fist in pride. Nappa just smirks then begins releasing a wave of key blasts with his only able arm and they clash into the ground ferociously. Tien is taken out with the first blast and as Yamcha tries to escape he is taken out by collateral damage. The only remaining fighters are Krillin, Gohan and Chaiotsu. Gohan, who has basically never fought a day in his life, is frozen with fear and Krillin is forced to use his destructor disc to destroy the incoming yellow key blast. It severs the blast and reduces it to a loose collection of energy that soon disperses. 
Come on, Gohan, fight for yourself or you'll die, Krillin shouts, before powering up himself. I see you two are trying to give me a little bit of resistance. I'm not going to stand for that, he says, in his descent. As Gohan sees the large, burly warrior approaching him, he snaps. His eyes start glowing red and he lifts him to flight subconsciously. Vegeta looks at his power level and is then astonished with the growth in his power. His power level, how could it have passed even 5,000, Vegeta says, while standing from his rock. So that will conclude the opening part of What If Goku Was Half Kryptonian. Please tell me something you liked about this video or something that I should improve on for the next part. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.